Good evening and welcome to another edition of Cue Ball's Cutting Corner. I'm Cue Ball 981 and for tonight's video, I have a treat. So in my last video, I mentioned that I would be making a video about my beginnings with the knife collecting, uh, becoming a knife enthusiast, EDC enthusiast, what, uh, what actually sparked my um, curiosity about knives and um, pocket knives in general. Um, my love for pocket knives, my obsession with pocket knives, uh, and also led me to, you know, one of the most incredible communities that I've been a part of. Um, so before I actually introduce the knife that started it all for me, uh, just a little bit more background about me. Uh, Cubal 981, uh, I've actually had as an email address uh, for several years, actually, since I went was back in college uh, in 1995, 96. Uh, I used to have uh, an AOL account and Cubal981 was actually my AOL username. And then when I switched over to, you know, Hotmail, um, Cubal981 at Hotmail.com is actually my email address. And so it's actually stuck with me uh, and has been my username for multiple platforms such as YouTube and Instagram uh, for many, many, many years. And uh, obviously with Cubal being my in my name, uh, <laughs> I enjoy pocket billiards. I love shooting pool. Um, and uh, my insignia, which was designed by Pocket Metal, thank you again, Pocket Metal, uh, was actually use, uh, uses a, a photograph of my pool table in my rec room. Um, it's hard to tell on my little uh, hank here with the, the way that this was embroidered, but the, this is actually a fireplace that's uh, behind my table here. And uh, this is the pool light up here and it's shining down on the table. And uh, this one is, in fact, if you look closely on my insignia in Instagram, uh, uh, this one is actually in the shape of a knife, uh, which Pocket Metal uh, did for me, which was really cool. And of course, you got the cue ball uh, behind uh, the, the the picture there. So uh, anyways, nine ball, eight ball, and one pocket are three very popular um, uh, pocket billiard games that I enjoy playing. And uh, one ball being, um, excuse me, one, bo one ball, one pocket, which is also known as one hole, uh, is uh, I... I look at that game as being kind of the the pinnacle of pocket billiards. And uh, though nine ball and eight ball are more popular and more well known for non pool enthusiasts, one pocket truly is a pool enthusiast game. And so if you ever get a chance to watch one pocket, you probably will get bored out of your mind because uh, some of the games last forever. Uh, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of strategy that goes into it, a lot of skill, incredible amounts of skill that go into one pocket. So if you become an incredible one pocket player, you'll clean house in nine ball and eight ball. That's how good of a game it is. It really tests every discipline that there is in, uh, in terms of pool. Uh, so uh, yeah, really awesome game. Uh, I liken it to chess. Uh, it's very strategic. So yeah, a little bit about me. Um, and then uh, obviously, you know, the knife. The knife that uh, started it all. Let's get to it. Uh, so thanks for letting me share that history. So when I was looking uh, for a pocket knife, uh, I was 45 years of age when I bought my first knife. Now, I had been gifted knives when I was younger. Uh, my dad purchased... Uh, and gifted me an old timers back in the day. It was two blades. I actually lost it two weeks after he gifted it to me. I went to church camp and my camp counselor confiscated it when I brought it out to show one of my friends. And uh, I never got it back from my camp counselor. And by the way, his name was Turkey. Um, our camp counselors uh, were named after other countries of the world. So I'll never forget you, Turkey. Um, you're Turkey for stealing my knife. Uh, anyways, it wasn't until several years later that my dad took me to our local Fred Myers, which is kind of a, a Walmart, but not quite as big a scale as Walmart. It's owned by Kroger. And it's very popular up in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, uh, we went to the outdoors department and they had a selection of knives there. And that's where... Um, my dad purchased and uh, uh, gifted me my first modern day pocket knife, and it happened to be a Spyderco. I believe it was a Dragonfly. It was a smaller knife, but it had partially serrated edge, and uh, and uh, it was, you know, again, uh, you know, more modern than say that old timer that uh, that I had years before, and. Uh, 
so that was kind of my first foray into the more modern style knives. Now, later on, my brother did gift me a, a couple bench maids, one that I still have in my collection. Uh, it's, it was designed by Alan Elishowitz. It's called the Striker Mini and, uh, uh, you know, 154 CM, which is great steel uh, back in those days uh, in the late 90, uh, 1990s, early 2000s. That was considered, you know, cream of the crop uh, for blade steels. And, uh, you know, Benchmade was considered to be, uh, you know, cream of the crop uh, producer of knives. And uh, so um, G10 handles that had been, you know, sculpted and uh, titanium liners for the liner lock. I mean, it truly was a you know, a, um, an incredible knife for its time. And it still is, uh, still is a, a very functional tool. So when I was looking at pocket knives, though, to buy, um, you know, I was looking for a community to get involved with. I'd been involved with the pool, pool community for years up in the Pacific Northwest. And even for the first couple of years, when I, after I moved here in 2016 to Phoenix, uh, there's a ton of pool players here in the Phoenix Valley. But when we hit COVID, um, the pool community, you know, it kind of died down and it had to uh, because nobody could really go out and, and play league or play in tournaments. You know, people were being told to stay at home and not to be in large gatherings. So uh, it kind of shoved us pool players, uh, you know, into our homes and thank goodness I have a table that I can play on, but I really couldn't have that many people over, you know, most people didn't want to come over and, you know, possibly catch COVID, you know, for me, if, you know, God forbid I had it. So um, I needed a, you know, an outlet. I needed a hobby. And so I was thinking back to my brother who used to be a, an avid collector of knives. And at one point he had a, a really nice collection of knives. Uh, unfortunately, he had to, to pretty much liquidate his entire collection because he was without a job for a few years and had to, uh, you know, pay the bills and put, you know, food on the table for his family. But I, you know, remember my brother being really big into knives and I was thinking to myself, gosh, I really haven't had a pocket knife for years. I need to buy a knife. So I decided uh, to go online and, and research some pocket knives and, you know, what would be a good first knife? And I, you know, instead of thinking about Benchmade, which, you know, were cool knives, what really, you know, struck in my head or stuck in my head, I should say, was that Spyderco that my dad had purchased when I was in my early teens. And, you know, I remember just how lightweight it was, how easy it was to deploy. It, you know, it had a sharp edge and, you know, it was just a, a good knife. And though I didn't have that knife for too long either, I mean, I was pretty careless as a kid, unfortunately, uh, lost a lot of coats and a lot of retainers and <laughs> lost my pocket knife. Um, that knife really stuck in my head. And, you know, looking into, you know, knives and what would be a good first EDC knife led me to this guy. And for those of you who don't know what this is, this is a Spyderco Delica 4, but I'm pretty sure most of you know what this is. This knife um, came out in 1990, this design, along with the Endura. It was known as the C10 Delica, and then there was the C11 Endura. And the C10 Delica is really kind of what put Spyderco on the map in terms of EDC functionality. Um, what an incredible design. I mean, the, the amount of detail that went into this knife, the amount of thought that went into making this knife, um, you really have to look closely to appreciate everything about this knife. And granted, I know that this is not necessarily a popular knife to carry around anymore. You know, it has a back lock, which is old technology. It's not quite as user friendly as, you know, a liner lock or, you know, a compression lock or, um, you know, a shark lock. <laughs> but, um, but as a tool, this is 99% of what you would need in a everyday carry lightweight knife. This is an incredible tool. And um, yeah, this is, uh, there's a reason why this model is still out there. And granted, this is the fourth generation of the Delica. Um, and, uh, but they still sell a lot of these knives. Spyderco really nailed the home run with this uh, grand slam as far as I'm concerned. You know, this isn't a very expensive knife. I think I paid $78, $79 for this knife. Comes with VG10 steel. And for today's standards, it's a good steel. It's not high end. It's more low end, you know, budget, maybe budget to mid tier. You'll see a lot of uh, kitchen knives using VG10. 
but it was you know a, a steel that was developed for knives uh, and it's made in Japan. It's a it's a good Japanese steel. Takes a good sharp edge. Boy, these uh, serrations are <laughs> incredibly sharp. Um, it's pretty stainless as well. It's got good you know good strength to it. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a reliable blade steel. And you know the Delica in general is a very functional knife because it has really good you know a really good form factor to it uh the ergos are fantastic on this knife even with my giant hands this medium-sized knife at least this to me is a medium-sized knife i can still get all four fingers on this knife and it's great it's comfortable now i did add an aftermarket clip this happens to be a lynch clip from lynch clips northwest um and uh yeah, makes this knife even better because now I can tip up carry uh, and, uh, you know, have that full concealed, you know, um, deep carry knife. So, you know, nothing's really protruding out. So you don't know that I'm carrying a knife. Um, but I digress. Uh, going back to, you know, the form of this knife, you know, these FRN handles, again, FRN stands for fiberglass reinforced nylon. Uh, the the way that they designed the texture, um, the depth of the texture, you know, the edges on the texture, really, you know, locks you into this knife. The the jimping that Spyderco came up with, the spacing in between the jimps, and you know, the depth of the jimps, and the you know, just the the little bit sharper edges on the you know, it's not quite as as uh, knocked down as some jimping you know that uh where you can slide easily this actually locks you in it's a this is the best jimping bar none i don't care i don't care what you think the spider co has really nailed the jimping on their knives um i wish more companies would do jimping like this it, but there's subtle details about the delica that um, I really appreciate and I really love art. I think that's another reason why, you know, I like knives so much is because there is a certain um, refine, um, refinement, you know, to the design and, you know, what makes a good knife design. You know, there's so many different components and different variables that go into um, a good design for a knife. Uh, this just happens to be a very useful and functional design. Uh, but to me, is also very elegant looking. Uh, for some, this may be incredibly ugly. Uh, I know a lot of people that don't like the look of Spydercos. I do. I think that uh, it's unique. Uh, it doesn't look like your traditional buck knife or you know your traditional drop point blade. I mean, this ramp that goes up, and then this you know this this uh, you know trailing edge that goes all the way down, and then it drops at the very end. I mean, this is a very unique blade style, but it's so functional. Um, and even though this isn't a full flat grind, uh, it's still, you know, thin enough behind the edge, you know, where it makes it a good slicer. You know, I, I feel comfortable cutting an apple with this. I may not go through tons of cardboard with this knife. Uh, it's not that comfortable uh, for long periods of use and heavy cardboard cutting, but I can do it. I can definitely do it with this knife. Um, but you know the the subtle contouring of the of the handles, um, you know they they just they knocked it out of the park. This is just an incredible knife for what I paid, and and for how useful this knife is. I don't carry this knife as much as I need to or I should, and I think as I'm now getting into the summertime, especially with it getting so hot here in Arizona, I wear a lot of shorts. Um, I think this is one I'm going to put back into the rotation because it's a great lightweight knife. And for the majority of my EDC purposes and what I need a knife for, this this will serve the purpose just fine. So, yeah, the Delica 4, my first knife. Who would have thought this would be my first adult knife purchase uh, at 45 years of age? I'm now 47, soon to be 48. <laughs> This is what started it all, folks. Uh, this is what uh, this is where Q Ball nine eight one came from. Was this knife right here? Now I'll go through these other ones quickly. This was not the last Spider Co. First and last Spider Co. that I purchased, 
my next purchase was actually the G10 version of the Para 3. And again, spider hole, oh my goodness. The spidey hole is bar none, the most innovative deployment method for any knife out there today. I, it's so simple, but so satisfying. I love flicking this knife. I love flicking this knife, reverse flick. I learned how to reverse flick with this knife actually. Uh, the thumb flick works very well with this as well. Now you'll notice here, this is a different lock style than what's on the Delica. The Delica has a mid back lock where on this knife, uh, it's known as the compression lock, which Spyderco designed. And it really is basically a liner lock that's on top of the knife instead of on the underbelly, uh, the underside of the knife. And uh, what I have added to the, uh, this actually, this little piece of, of plastic, or I think this is black micarta, uh, this is a, something that I added to the compression lock to make it more accessible. And it's called a CME, which stands for Compression Made Easy. And this was designed and created by Justin with OCD for EDC. He sells these kits for various uh, compression lock Spyderco knives. Uh, they're around $20 to $25, depending on what materials you'd like. Uh, they're a simple kit. Uh, it's simple to, to install, but really makes this knife that much better in terms of deploying the knife, and disengaging the knife, um, much more fidgety now too. So um, if you have a Spyderco with a compression lock, I highly recommend adding a CME. Um, also on this particular knife, I added the linch clip. I like deep carry clips. Uh, and uh, so yeah, um, this was my second purchase, another Spyderco. My third purchase, guess what? Another Spyderco, <laughs> and this one is the Bear 3 Lightweight. What makes this lightweight? Uh, obviously, it has fiberglass reinforced nylon handles instead of the G10. Uh, and what's actually better about this knife is that the uh, contouring is smooth around the edges, and it makes this actually a more comfortable knife than the standard G10 version. I mean, this is still comfortable, don't get me wrong, but the FRN version, um, the lightweight version of the Para 3 is even more comfortable. And it's also a lighter weight knife. This one uh, comes in, in CTS BD1N seal. Uh, again, another popular knife that's used in kitchen knives. Um, however, it's a good knife seal. Uh, you know, it takes a sharp edge, holds a, a fairly decent edge. You know, it's, it's a budget oriented seal now, but uh, you know, good seal nonetheless. Um, I didn't change the pocket clip on this. Uh, I left it with the wire pocket clip. It, this is good enough for me. Um, it does make this a deep carry, um, you know, for this particular knife. Uh, this is a really easy one to wear with my shorts because um, it's not a lot of weight. So it doesn't pull my shorts down. It doesn't make uh, my pocket feel like it's, you know, dragging me to the ground. Um, but everything that is good about the original uh, pair of three uh, is what makes this knife, you know, great too, um, but even more so lightweight. I don't have the CME on this one yet. Um, I actually have had this out of my rotation for quite some time, but I think I'm going to purchase a CME and add to this guy and, and put this also in my rotation for the summer because this really is a, another excellent carry. Now I did buy one more version of the Para 3 lightweight with the Spy 27 steel. That's a proprietary steel that that Spider Co. had come up with um, a couple years ago. Uh, I ended up selling that knife. I only needed one version of the lightweight. So um, and uh, I know the owner of that knife actually gifted it to somebody else. So very cool. Uh, the next uh, Spider Co. actually took me quite some time to, uh, to acquire because it is so popular and oftentimes it's sold out, um, especially when they do their sprint runs with this knife and, and it comes in a premium steel with premium materials on the handle. Um, but I ended up just getting a standard version with uh, S30VN steel. Um, S30VN, excuse me, S30V steel, um, same steel that comes on the original Para 3. So S, S30V, uh, again, great, great steel, you know, all around steel. At one point in time, this used to be uh, considered, you know, the next best thing uh, after 154CM. Um, you know, takes this has a very sharp edge to it. Uh, I like the Shaman because it's a full size knife. I can get all four fingers on this knife. The G10 handles are um, 
are well contoured, you know, the very nice chamfering around the edges. So um, the only thing is I wish they would have chamfered a little bit on the inside edge. This is a little bit sharp. So if I squeeze really, really hard, I can feel it. Um, but again, you have that excellent spider coat jimping at the top and even in this finger choil, which is created by the handle of the knife and the blade of the knife um, really allows you to lock in and get in, into this knife. And, and again, I feel so confident with this in my hand and squeezing this tight. Nobody's going to get this out of my hand, not without a uh, probably injuring themselves. So you can see I added a CME to this as well. So it really makes that compression lock. Um, it, it adds about 10 times the value as far as I'm concerned. It makes it very easy to deploy and, and, and to uh, um, disengage that lock. It makes it very easy for people who are left-handed too. And what's nice about the, you know, I can't do it very much well with my left-handed, but that's okay. I'm right-handed folks, uh, I'm not ambidextrous. Uh, but what's cool about the compression lock too is that it gets your fingers out of the way. If I can actually do it, there we go. Uh, Get your fingers out of the way of the path of the blade as it's pivoting and going back into the knife. So when you disengage this lock, uh, you don't have to worry about your fingers getting in the way. Some knives are so drop shut. And if it's a liner lock, you have to really hurry to get your hand out of the way. Otherwise, you're going to cut yourself. Um, what's cool about the uh, the Shaman 2 is not only is this a bigger knife, it fits my bigger hand well, you know, much better than the smaller Delica here and even the Para 3. Uh, but it has... One form of deployment that a lot of people don't know you can do with this knife. Oh, geez, and I just messed it up. Let's, there we go. I got it. Uh, you can front flip this knife. The jimping is so good on this knife that you can literally, if, there we go. You can literally front flip this knife fairly reliably. Uh, if I wasn't behind the camera here, uh, it would be a lot easier for me to do that. I can do it fairly reliably. Uh, but you can reverse flick this. You can thumb flick this. You can, again, use the compression lock uh, to deploy this knife. You can, in fact, because it is a stone wash blade on this knife, you can, in fact, ring finger flick this knife, reverse flick this knife. That's incredible. Um, yeah, awesome knife. Now, there was a, a knife here that I bought after the Shaman that I'm not going to actually have uh, on display, and it's because I don't really care for it. It's a Manix 2XL. I should have gotten the regular Manix because I hear it's much better uh, than the Manix 2, Manix 2XL. I didn't like how thin the knife was, and it just didn't have enough contouring. It wasn't comfortable really in my hand. Even though I have giant hands and it is a giant knife, it just it just wasn't for me. And I, I mean, the ball lock, uh, which is kind of the uh, Spider Coast take on the access lock from Benchmade, it uses a ball bearing instead of the bar. Um, I liked it. Um, mine was a little bit stiff and I think I just didn't allow it enough time to break in, but I, yeah, didn't quite like it as, as well as I do the compression lock. Now, my last Spider Co that I purchased is the Para Military 2. And this is another full size knife. It's about the same length as the Shaman. Doesn't quite have as thick a blade stock. Um, however, this particular version comes in crew wear, which is a higher end steel uh, than the S30V uh, and then the VG10. Uh, crew wear happens to be one of my favorite steels. It holds a ridiculous edge. Uh, it's got good edge retention. It's a, a tough steel too. It's just a really darn good steel. It's not the best of the best, but it's good. Uh, but I like this version because of the natural micarta. Uh, I was able to get a CME that was similar in color. Uh, and then, of course, add the lynch clip uh, to this as well. And this is an excellent knife. Now, the version that this uh, is is full liners. So these are exposed liners. These are not recessed liners or, or what they would call... Um, uh, pocketed liners. Uh, so these, you know, these liners actually make up the handle um, and are flush with the the liner. Um, excuse me, uh, the scales, the micarta scales. So um, I believe the original para paramilitary two has uh, those pocketed liners, and so you can't actually see the steel liners. They're recessed into the material itself. Uh, you can kind of see that on the um, the para three. Uh, if you look closely inside, uh, you can see how they're nested in there. So nested liners, that's another term too that they use. So, but uh, anyways, uh, great knife. Uh, this is one that I do like to carry often. Uh, I just, it's just a solid knife. It's a great worker knife, user knife. I don't care if this thing gets beat up, you know, because uh, 
yeah, it's, it, you know, it, um, it, it looks good with a little patina on it. You know, a few scratches here and there, it's a, it's a great user knife. All right. So those are my spider coats and it all started from this Delica and my knife collecting, um, obsession stemmed from this knife. This is what sparked it all folks. If it wasn't for this Delica, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this video today. Um, I wouldn't have some of the friends that I have to this day who I care about greatly. Uh, and you know who you are. Uh, I've been blessed um, becoming a member of this community. And I appreciate all the kind things that people have done for me. And uh, I've been able to do some kind things for others as well. I'm going to leave with uh, one last thought. You know, one of the... Um, phrases that we use in the knife community is hashtag DSKFS, which stands for do something kind for someone. And, you know, the pool community was awesome. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of great friends up in the Pacific Northwest. I have a lot of good friends in the pool community here in Phoenix, but the knife community has taught me, you know, that, um, that kindness really is what it's all about being good to your brothers and your sisters. And it doesn't matter what background you are, what lifestyle you live, what religion you are, what sex you are, what it doesn't matter, you know, um, treat each other with dignity, treat each other with respect, you know, be up. <laughs> and that, uh, you know, what does that mean? Be a, be a good person. You know, and that is what, to me, you know, to me, this community is all about is striving to be better versions of ourselves day after day. And that support that we have and that we give, um, it's, it's fantastic. So anyways, thank you for watching this long video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I would like to know in the comments, what was your first knife? What bit you and sent you on down that rabbit hole? Um, what was your first knife? I'd love to love to hear your stories as well. And then also, if you have any suggestions, any feedback, um, please leave comments. Uh, I'm new to this, and I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you have any suggestions, you know, let me know. I can handle constructive criticism as well. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I only can get better as I. You know, take the feedback and listen to you. And, um, but again, my purpose here is to share my love of knives. It's not here to, you know, I'm not doing this as a business. I'm not doing this, uh, you know, to, uh, I'm doing this because I have a passion for knives. And if you enjoy watching these videos, awesome. If you don't, hey, there's a ton of knife content out there. There's a ton of people that are doing awesome knife videos. And if you need help, um, if you'd like some suggestions, I know a lot of the different knife content creators out there. Uh, I'd be more than happy to, you know, to, to, to uh, send you their way. So, all right, that's it. Cue Ball's Cutting Corner. Thanks again for joining me. You have a wonderful evening and God bless.